What's up everyone, Alex here. So a few weeks ago, when I released my preview of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, there was one particular story beat that I wanted to talk about that I kind of just gushed over and really exposed my emotions and feelings and thoughts of that particular scene. But I left it to your imagination as to what actually happened in those particular scenes. Now, before anything else, if you played through Chapter 1 of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth all the way up until Sephiroth walks through the flames, and only at that point, I invite you to finish that section until you see this specific scene that clearly is marked Chapter 2. Because in this video, I'm actually going to tie a lot of pieces together, tying my emotions to specific scenes in Chapter 1, as well as reveal to you some behind-the-scenes things that I didn't reveal in the travel vlog because this would have spoiled the surprise. And needless to say, if you haven't even played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, don't watch this video. Come back to it later once you've at least finished Chapter 1. Alright, you've been warned. So I remember being told not to capture anything on Chapter 1. And I was like thinking to myself, uh-oh, this is going to be a big deal, isn't it? Because the fact that they want it to be secret means it's kind of a big deal. And so there's a little bit of anxiety that actually built up in me as I sat down on my station. And as soon as I booted up the game and the words Chapter 1, Nebel Mission came up, I was just in anxiety hell. Here's the thing, I've played through Final Fantasy VII, much like some of you here, and you know what's going to happen. You just know what's going to transpire. It's just that now it's going to be in another form. Maybe it's going to be loyal to the representation back in Final Fantasy VII when it was first revealed. But we don't know. This is the first time anybody's ever played it, right? Your experience included. Unless you haven't played 7, of course. But because I had that image in my brain of what's going to happen, there's this anxiety that it's creeping ever so slowly because there are several events in this mission that are crucial to the advancement of the story. We know that Sephiroth is going to be in Nibel. We know that a young Tifa is going to be in Nibel. We know that the town of Nibel is going to be burnt down. We know that Tifa's father is going to get killed. We know that Tifa is going to get stabbed. These are all moments that are scattered throughout the entirety of Chapter 1. And the developers built this glacial buildup toward those like really powerful moments towards the end. And you notice how the developers kind of like wanted you to kind of get used to Nebel and its environments. That's why they kind of strew you along through Cloud's memories so that you can kind of relive these moments as painful as they are like right there. So one after the other after the other events that we already knew was supposed to happen start happening. And my anxiety just kept building up, building up. And up until the point where Sephiroth declares that Genova is his mother, wreaks havoc in the town, kills the mayor, stabs Tifa, goes up to the reactor, frees Genova. Imagine being forced to sit down for two hours to experience the entirety of this chapter without any sort of breaks whatsoever. That was the moment where even listening to Britt Barron's interpretation of that scene as Tifa was so powerful and it broke my freaking heart. Like listening to her and the acting and the animation of like what happened with her dad. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of all of this. Which made me remember the introduction with her dad at the very beginning, how reluctant he was that she was gonna be joining this expedition party. You can still back out. You don't have to do this. I'm going and that's that. And it was just so much emotion that's been piled up ever since you started the chapter. And again, for the people who played Final Fantasy VII, there's a little thing at the back of your head that's making you notice a very specific detail that I'm not going to spoil here, that you're like, that's very clever, right? And it's all represented in this one chapter, in this one chapter. And when you get to the end, when you finally see that Cloud blacks out, and he doesn't remember anything else, and we return to calm, literally and figuratively, you're just like, wow, what a way to start Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Literally, like, the biggest scene in Final Fantasy VII history is the first chapter of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. 
And that's why I felt the need to just walk away and just kind of soak in all these emotions because it was so packed. Because not just because of nostalgia of remembering the exact moments and the exact scenes as it's playing out, but seeing them in higher fidelity with amazing voice acting and better graphics, like it was just such a crazy thing to see fully 3D. This was like the opposite of the reaction that I had in a way when the camera zooms out of Final Fantasy VII Remake. It wasn't like joy and tears of nostalgia. This was just like impending doom, visions of death and carnage that were just really what this scene represented. And I was just like, okay, I have to stop. I have to step away because that is a lot. And in case you forgot, this is what I said in my preview video, now that you have the proper context as to what I'm actually talking about here. The way that I'm gonna describe this to you is the story of what actually happened after I experienced this scene. I remember at my station, putting down my headset and controller, walking up to the catering table, grabbing two giant pieces of cupcakes, a small thing of quiche, and a can of soda. But I remember picking up all these items and then walking towards like one of those standing tables and just eating my emotions because of what I had experienced. I remember just feeling so distraught and so troubled and so emotionally like angry and just all of these weird spiraling emotions in my head and my heart and there have been many emotional moments in video games before that I've experienced but that one hit so hard and I even looked over the sea of stations and saw like all my peers still playing the game and I'm like thinking to myself I experienced something really intense and I just have to process it emotionally and because I don't know what would have happened if I just kind of pushed through. And I know that influencers or like press people, are, you know, press people like we're supposed to be like kind of objective and, you know, take for what it is. But I was just so just caught unawares that I had to step away. And I remember just like being so enamored by everything that led up to the point that I stepped away from the station. Now, granted, everyone's reaction is going to be very different. But to me, as somebody who loved Final Fantasy VII and knows that scene by heart, even literal years and decades from the last time I played it, I was just so, so taken aback. I was like, okay, time for a break. Now that we've actually talked about chapter one, I wanna share with you a story from my travel vlog that I didn't share because of the required context that needed to happen. So as you all know, I met Britt Barron, who is the voice actress for Tifa. And what I didn't tell you is that I actually approached her and talked about her performance in that specific chapter. I actually talked about the moment where she was crying in agony and tears as her father was dying. And she was so emotional, guys. Like, I'm not even joking. She was just so feeling like so honored that she could be a part of something so emotional and impactful. And I told her like, this is literally how the game is starting. Like there's this emotional journey where the player is being led through like what seems to be kind of like a typical mission and stuff, especially unbeknownst to new players, only to find some really emotionally charged moments towards the end and the birth of a villain. And I remember Brit just saying how when she was recording it, she didn't really see the scene because a lot of voice actors don't actually get to see the scenes that they're playing. They usually get to be directed by somebody else who's describing the scene for them. But the fact that she was able to do that without any sort of reference to what's actually happening and to deliver a powerful performance as Tifa, I just like that imagery in my head is like glued, like right in my brain. And I'm just like, yeah, I it's really incredible. And I hope that you felt like her acting was really good too, because those moments leading up to that point, mm, that's just, that's amazing. That's just really amazing. Especially like Tifa's reactions and calm, you know, right after that scene, like right after the flashback. So anyways, I have made my peace with chapter one, but if you haven't made your peace with chapter one, I would like to invite you to share your thoughts and feelings playing through the Nebel mission in the comments below. 
I don't want anybody talking about what happens before chapter one. I don't want anybody talking about what happens after chapter one. We're focusing on talking about chapter one in this video. And let me know what you think of this video because I don't normally single out specific chunks of story in games, but I thought for such a seminal story beat in Final Fantasy VII history that this was important to talk about. And given its proximity to the beginning of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I felt like that this is something that all of us could just join in and have a conversation about. Anyways, I await your comments, post them down below, and we'll talk about it. Thank you very much for watching, everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and enjoy Final Fantasy VII Rebirth.